Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Brian Sussman in for Dr. Michael Savage. Savage is off. Three-day weekend. He deserves it. Next week's going to be a huge week for him as Government Zero hit the sh hits the shelves on Tuesday. Of course, uh, many of you know me. I've filled in for Savage on a few occasions. Always a pleasure. Quite frankly, always an honor to be joining you from the left coast. Speaking to you from KSFO in San Francisco, Michael's flagship station in many ways. He was a guy who started, really, we, we began the format. I was just a listener then. But in the mid-90s, they began this conservative format. And Michael Savage was new to radio and became a huge hit in San Francisco. And shortly thereafter, goes national. And now you know the rest of the story. The number to call, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Don't forget michaelsavage.com for all your new need, uh, news needs. Sign up for the free Michael Savage newsletter delivered to your inbox. And again, I was just talking to the producers of this program. Michael has written a bunch of books. He's rather prolific when it comes to writing. I wouldn't be surprised personally if Government Zero is his biggest book yet. It will be the biggest bestseller yet. That's my guess. I'm going to I'm going to interview him on my program in San Francisco next week and I can't wait. Uh my day was going well until I heard Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi is my representative. Don't hold it against me. We're outnumbered in San Francisco. I think the percentage of people that are registered Democrats in San Francisco is I think is less than 20%. Uh, registered Republicans. Did I say Democrats? Re registered Republicans. Less than 10%, 20%. It's a tiny little number. And, uh, you know, you're laughed at. Although it's interesting, isn't it? Because here I am working for an all-conservative lineup on a station based in San Francisco, and we are one of the most popular stations in the entire area. And we're a rallying point for people with a brain in their head and know how to use it. We're a rallying point for right thinkers. Maybe not all Republicans, many declined to states. That's what they call them in California. If you don't want to register with either party, you're a decline to state or a registered independent. Anyway, we get them all. We get them all. We get a lot of disenfranchised Democrats listening as well. But everything was going well until I heard my so-called representative Nancy Pelosi. She's talking about the Benghazi hearings yesterday. I heard Michael talking about Benghazi. I, I would agree with him on many levels. Uh, it in this regard, do you realize, I don't know how many people watched these hearings yesterday. Probably not that many. Let's be realistic. It's work time. People are working. The only people who watched were probably those who are retired and really care because they've got time on their hands. You know, the, the majority of those who will vote Democrat, uh, well, the welfare recipients were watching Jerry Springer. I don't know what to tell you. I don't think anybody watched and to quote Hillary Clinton, what difference does it make? I mean, it's game, set, match. You're not going to get this administration going out to prosecute her. I understand the FBI is looking, but do you really think now, especially that Joe Biden has decided not to run, that we're going to see pedal to the metal to take her out? I believe Barack Obama sees her as his third term. Hillary Clinton I'm talking about. So here's Pelosi. Here's Pelosi. Oh, and listen to this. This is coming from uh, one of the great producers here on the Savage Nation, Jim. Lois Lerner is not going to be charged. You see what? Do you see what I'm talking about? Do you see what I'm talking about? Lois Lerner is not going to be charged. Hillary Clinton won't be charged. So here's Nancy Pelosi. I can finally get there. She's talking about this Benghazi committee. I thought there were some fascinating moments, quite frankly. And, and I will applaud those Republicans on the committee. I wasn't sure what to expect. I really wasn't. 
Because oftentimes when these politicians, both side of the, sides of the aisle, get on a committee, there's a lot of grandstanding. And it's a lot of opportunity for them to get in the limelight and make a name for themselves. I have to be honest, I didn't see that yesterday. I was very pleased with what I saw. Now, on the Democrat side of the aisle, Democrat side of the aisle was just carrying the water, demonizing Republicans. This was all much ado about nothing. Oh, the taxpayer money we have wasted on this. By the way, there was an interesting story. I'll get to Pelosi in just a second. There was an interesting story this morning. The Democrats are just crying foul over the amount of money spent on these hearings, right? Something like almost $5 million on the hearings. I personally think it's money well spent, although, again, I don't know what's going to stick. Hillary Clinton takes Teflon capsules. The Clintons take Teflon ca cl capsules. They are slippery. They're really, really good at this. Did you see her walk in the room yesterday? She walked into the party like she was walking onto a yacht, to quote uh, a famous song from way back when. I'm serious. She did. She walks in, rock star, media, wild, people with their cell phones taking pictures, happy look on her face, goes to the dais, shakes every hand, although I believe there was one hand she didn't shake. Did any of you notice that? It was that Republican guy who was not wearing... A, a suit coat, a sport coat, any kind of coat. He's just wearing his uh, shirt. And uh, I looked at this guy and I thought, man, that dude looks athletic. I just, I looked, at, I like athletes. I looked at him, I thought, that guy, he is, he looks like an athlete. And then I heard him speak. Well, as Hillary's walking across the dais, I noticed, maybe, maybe I missed something, maybe. I don't believe I saw him extend the right hand of fellowship, so to speak, to Hillary Clinton. He gave her eye contact. He let her know what she was in for, but he did not. To my, uh, maybe, maybe someone can reaffirm, uh, can correct me on this. I don't think there was a handshake. There wasn't a smile. That's for sure. Hillary comes in, sits down. She's cool, calm, and composed, except for that coughing fit. And she answered the questions in very sly, lawyerly, highly oiled rhetoric fashion. She was actually pretty darn good. Diabolically so, in my opinion, but pretty darn good. But there was that moment from that guy. His name's Jim Jordan. And I'll tell you a little bit more about it because it turns out he is athlete. He's one of the great, all-time great NC2A Division I wrestlers, as it turns out. And he got Hillary into a close one yesterday in terms of just pinning her to the ground. But I, I will tell you. We learned a few things, didn't we? There were 600 emails from Ambassador Stevens to the State Department requesting more security. Hillary says, I didn't hear about that. You didn't hear about that. You ran, you ran that department. You ran that department. You ran that de Secretary of State Department. Did I say Social Security? I've been on the air for a long time already this morning, forgive me. But the bottom line is, hey, I get to do seven hours of radio today. That's a big deal. Can I tell you? Four in the morning, three in the afternoon for Dr. Savage. But the bottom line is this. She ran the State Department, and she didn't know about 600 emails that poured into the State Department from Ambassador Stevens asking for more security. Oh, I didn't know about that. No. The lion's share, she had no idea. I'm thinking, if you don't know what's going on in the State Department, how are you supposed to know what's going on in the United States of America when you become president? This woman is disqualified, unqualified. Has she ever run for anything? She was given that Senate seat. She was given the State Department position. So we learn that. We also learn more about this Sid Blumenthal character. I'll get to Pelosi in just a moment. We also learned about Sid Blumenthal yesterday. And how the communiques sent from Sid weren't really even his. I mean, he was getting this intel from another source, a source that was not even revealed to the Benghazi committee or to the State Department. Who are these people? Where is she getting this intel from? Isn't that curious to anyone? And then, and then we learn that in emails, even to her own daughter, immediately after the attack, she said that this was a terrorist attack from an Al-Qaeda affiliate. And yet, the very next day, wasn't it? Wasn't it the very next day? We had Susan Rice hitting the way, TV waves, telling everyone, and this was the meme that the Obama administration set forth for the next two weeks. It was because of a YouTube video. Oh, we've got more on that. I can't wait. I cannot wait. But, Pelosi, 
Uh, if you're driving right now, please keep two hands on the wheel. Otherwise, you'll wind up in the center divide. Uh, this is Pelosi. Uh, she says the Democrats, her Democrats, may quit the Benghazi panel because, well, Clinton's spoken. That's all there is. At the end of the day, this is a disconnect from reality. Take a listen to, sadly, my representative. Well, it's up to the members of the committee. I've taken my uh, lead from them on it. You know, we had a, quite a uh, back and forth in our caucus as to whether I should even appoint people. I was very proud of the members that we appointed. I think that they have been outstanding in the 17, 18 months of this uh, in investigation. investigation. But uh, they may decide that now uh, in, in uh, defending the truth, uh, their job is done. They want to move on. Right? I have to talk to them and see what risk they see if we would walk away. Because you see the distortion, the just the really disconnect with reality that exists on just that the committee. Really disconnect from this. Good lord. Here, you want to disconnect from reality? How about this? Um, Charles Woods, father of Ty Woods. He's one of those four guys that died in Benghazi. We find this out today. So he was defending the CIA at Annex. So he shared with the media today notes that he took after his encounter with Clinton during the uh, the casket ceremony after the bodies were flown back to the United States. And the entry says this. Are you ready for this? I gave Hillary a hug and shook her hand and she said, we are going to have the filmmaker arrested who was responsible for the death of my son. That's his diary entry. Even though she knew, she knew that this attack was at the hands of al-Qaeda extremists, we're going to blame the filmmaker. Now why? It was September. Barack Hussein Obama was running for president, and he would have an election in just a couple of months. Do you think that might have had something to do with it, huh? Just maybe, huh? All right, Brian Sussman in for the good doctor, Dr. Michael Savage. It's always a pleasure. It's always an honor. The phone number, 855-400-SAVAGE. Sussman here on this, the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800 B U I C O I N. Brian Sussman in for Dr. Michael Savage. Oh, it's just a great day, isn't it? Great day in America. Now we have Obama gutting the military. And the question, will America ever regain its tough-as-nails military? Will we ever be the military that everyone fears? You know, that's the one thing that I used to be proud of in this country. We had a military nobody wanted to mess with. You didn't want to mess with the United States of America. We come in swiftly. We come in with force. Extremely well-trained. The best of the best. But all that's changing, isn't it, under Barack Hussein Obama? Because today, the Army has disclosed that it's cut 80,000 soldiers since 2010, and they plan to reduce the force by another 40,000 by the end of 2017. So total active number of troops, 450,000. Nearly every army installation will experience reductions of some size. You know, a rational human being, seriously, just has to step back from time to time and look at this administration and this president in the White House and say, and what team is he on? Who is he working for here? Who is he working for? Then we also have uh, the $612 billion defense policy bill. He vetoes this. This was his rebuke to the GOP. He's vetoed this sweeping $612 billion defense policy bill. He says the bill resorts to gimmicks, as he calls it. Gimmicks. You want gimmicks? Hey, let's start with the Federal Reserve. That's about as federal as Federal Express. You want gimmicks? Hey, let's talk about the debt in this country and how we're bankrolling this this United States of America budget. You want gimmicks? We can talk about that. We can talk about these ridiculous CRs, these continuing resolutions. So Obama opposes the defense bill because it uses creative budget maneuvers, as he calls them, to boost defense spending by $38 billion without increasing domestic spending. So he wants Congress to revise the bill. Doesn't want more defense spending. No, 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 no. 
cut the military, make us weak, make us vulnerable. You know what's amazing today? Uh, and by the way, he also...